hello. So I decided what better than to call this awesome team minus one missing one that's somewhere around here and he'll be here soon. This awesome team of voiced out, say how it is, group of people <laughs> whom I love dearly. And they need no introduction because they are all known throughout the social media outlets. But we'll start with the young lady. Introduce yourself. Hey, y'all, what's going on? Toward this seat in the building. Good evening. And this young man. Hello, hello. My name is Rico Jackson. How's everybody doing today? Great. How's it going, Rico? How you doing, Greg? Hey, I'm back, man. I'm back in the flesh, man. I know that's right. And this other young man who needs no introduction because like we were saying before the show, he knows a lot about media. You need any of your media stuff done, acting and all that stuff? That man under me... <laughs> <laughs> is the one. Hey, please introduce yourself, Mr. Giles. Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Greg Giles. I have executive films where we do all types of multimedia projects, including television, film, commercials, and music videos. So for any of your needs, just please give, feel free to give me a call. Or if you have any other uh, issues that's dealing with social, uh, social media or social injustice, contact Anna. Rico, Toya, or Greg. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that introduction. I should have had you start it. I should have been like, Greg, you start things out. You start it out. Um, so the reason why we're all on air tonight is because I read something and I was like, I wonder if this group of people would think about taking $1,500 for a vaccine. Hmm. Toya, we'll start with you. What's your opinion on that? And you guys can go on down and everybody talk and do your thing. And we'll let it go like that, flow like that. I'm not doing no immunization, no vaccination, no communication, no sanitation. That's about all I'm going to do is make sure I'm keeping clean. I'm going to make sure that I got my, my um, immune system up. I'm going to do what I was supposed to have been doing before Corona anyway, that I probably started shipping, eating all this fast food all day instead of eating at home, like I parents said, eating all this sugar and carrying on. I'm not going to take no vaccination. I went to the hospital with internal bleeding, they sent me home because I didn't have insurance to die. So why now, all of a sudden, because of corona, which ain't bothered me, she don't bother me, I don't bother her. Why I got to be taking a vaccination? She ain't bothering me. I don't know who she for. I don't know who she come to get. But me and corona ain't got no problem, okay? And I'm not finna be taking no vaccination. If she want to come handle me, then I'm going to handle her, just me, the Lord, Jesus, and But I'm not going to take no vaccination. You, Rico. Oh, okay. I thought you were waiting. I thought you were going to do the whole thing. You know, I'm with Toya, man. I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, I got other issues that I'm dealing with, so I'd rather do an even swap. If they want to do something for me, they can knock this hernia out for me. But I ain't had no problem with no coronavirus. You get what I'm saying? So we could do an even swap. But right about now, um, I'm going to do what I've been doing. I'm going to quarantine myself, separate myself from people. I'm going to stay out of the public. I'm going to put my mask on. I'm going to spray my lights all. I'm going to keep doing my hygiene thing because I have not had one issue with it. Even though I know people have been dying. Don't get me wrong. I know people have been dying. But I've been doing something right. So I don't need your help right now. Help me when I need it. Keep the little fifteen hundred dollars. You ain't gonna bribe me to be no lab rat. <laughs> it might be all that exercises you you get every morning with that walking, Rico. It, That's it, helping it, too. It. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Greg. Hey, hey, uh, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and jump on everybody else's bandwagon right now because I'm not taking no tests. I don't need no money that bad where I got to go and take nobody's test in order for them to give me something. It's it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, like the, uh, the situation where the Tuskegee uh, – Institute where they were uh, giving those people syphilis and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure what they was doing too. They was probably said, "Hey, come get this nickel, come get this dollar, come get this money to uh, to go ahead and uh, get this uh, get these tests done." Uh, and if you had bills to pay, you know, any means by you know any uh, uh, means necessary to go ahead and get them paid, that's what you did, you know. And you still got people to this day will do anything to pay their bills and take care of their family. And I do mean anything. So, you know, so to just get a test, it's nothing to them, to some of the stuff that they're out here in the streets doing in order to feed their families and keep food, you know, on the table and a, a roof over their head. So, I mean, you, there are going to be some people that that buy into it, but just not me, not me. Some of them going to do it for that PS5. And it's Christmas time. It's going to be right on time if they could do it before Christmas. Man, we're going to see people lined up to get that shot. Yeah. Well, my, my thing is, is it a pandemic? What what what's up with the bribery? I mean, the whole goal and main focus has nothing to do with money. We were talking about millions of people' lives that were at stake, and the pieces again to figure out how we can return this. Not fifteen hundred vaccines. How about come sanitize our streets? I mean, little stuff that we've looked at other people do in other countries. Like, let's get with that first, right? And then when that don't work, then maybe I'm not gonna try. No, you can be for free. You can look at this. You can say I give four point five million dollars for the vaccination, and I know you really tricking me. If four point five million or four point five dollars, I don't trust the United States government that took all my mm -hmm. folks and did what they did. I'm not gonna do that. No, start. Let's start. Let's start from cleaning, sanitation, all these. Streets, trees, buildings, inside out, cars, plants, like everything. Once the government starts taking those steps, then I might have a little bit more security in what they're about to do to me. It will not be harmful because of what they're doing on average when you uh, got contamination someplace. I might believe you, but y'all didn't even do that. And these want to come scrape on something in six months. It say here this no, I'm not no, I'm not with that. So and you know, I'm with the comments that I'm reading down the stream as well from the different outlets, as well as I am totally with what each and every one of the panel has said here. I mean, y'all think about it. We already ain't getting no income tax check whether y'all believe this or not you guys will see when you guys file taxes if you guys get anything it's going to be very little okay believe this this is why i believe they're offering this 1500 if you ask me okay first of all you're not going to get money or the money you're used to getting right which is really bad for the low income and especially us minorities, as the nation would say, which we, as I tell you guys all the time, we're majority, right? Us people of color, we're majority. So no one in this world, I don't care who you are, is gonna turn around and make me take no vaccine. I will not go to the doctor. I will continue ordering Instacart from home. I will continue having my children go virtual online. Do you guys know that the school system in uh, the county I live in, in the outskirts of Atlanta in Atlanta, they have decided that each student has to go mandatory to the school to take a GMAS test. Why? We're spreading it more. Do we not get the fact that it has to stop, stay home? There are situations where we have to go up, right? But seriously, now we're pressuring the kids. A child or a teenager like Nathaniel, imagine him younger, 
They take off their masks, they put their hands in their mouth, they catch COVID. How's he ever going to be able to tell anybody I'm sick? Until you see it really, really bad and it's too late. Exactly. They're not considering this, you know? So I saw that in the news. I was like, no, there has to be people who feel the same way. I'm just not understanding what would possess any administration to do this, um, period. Um, I think people should just stay home, continue doing what they're doing, what Rico said. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, you, you leave the choice up to the people and you have what we have now. Another rise in the number. See, that's what the problem is. We elect people to represent us and do what's right and make decisions that's logical for the, the entire country, the entire nation. And then they turn right back around and say, well, I don't want the people to be mad at me for trying to protect them. I wouldn't have mind if they shut everything down. I was really, I mean, I actually, I felt like I was sort of afraid, but going outside for a week straight, looking up in the sky, not seeing a plane go across the, stri uh, across the sky, Man, was some and seeing the cars not going up and down the road, going down the road when you did and seeing less than half of the vehicles that you would normally see. Man, that was so exhilarating. It was like peaceful and calm. I'm like, man, you know what, man? It's sort of like we needed this little slowdown a little bit. But you know, people are so addicted to their luxuries and enjoying the final things in life, um, life going to get the nails done and stuff like that. Or, going to the club, going to sports bars, and, you know, we don't want people to be unhappy because we don't want to lose votes. And so now here it is. We got a problem. We got a situation where, you know, uh, man, it might not be the end to this. Well the, well, the thing that I noticed, too, is when this corona stuff first started happening, and uh, that was a, a, a drop in crime in a lot of areas. It's just almost like uh, all of the people that were doing the crime actually decided to stay in for a while. But now it seems like the crime is back on the rise, uh, like they decided to come back out and play. So, I mean, uh, I guess people, you know, with desperate times call for desperate measures. So they're back out here doing some of the same silly antics and stuff that they did before the corona hit. Uh, so, I mean, you know, as, as, as much as we have a lot of positive things going on, we also still have the negative things going on. And, uh, and people, you know, a lot of people think just because people are in politics or in a position of power or in uh, in, uh, in the legislative uh, building or hold an executive uh, title, that doesn't mean that they're exactly smart. You know, it doesn't mean that they're geniuses. It just means that they, they're there because you got some true idiots that are in, in, in the White House or, you know, or in, in uh, charge of our uh systems that we actually have to go by these rules and regulations and these laws. But a lot of these things that they do are on purpose. You may think that they're stupid, but they're doing it on purpose, just like, you know, what we talked about, about uh, controlling the population. So, I mean, so you sometimes you got to look at things from the outside in and don't be just so naive to think and listen to everything that they say. I totally agree. Go ahead. Go ahead, sis. No, I agree with all of you guys. You know, it's amazing. It, it, it's not about an administration. It's people. See, people, human beings get into these things of authority, and they use that power of the position that they have to dictate and declare what's going on. And, again, if we just look at America, if you when the spirit of who you are can take a race and do what they've done, then what do you mean why are we here? What, now what, it's just not about black people? Now they just don't care it's about bread now? You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, I'm not surprised at all because the level of evil that has put us where we are as a, uh, a state is the same level of evil that dwells within that system now which is exactly why I took my butt back to school because I'm running for president in 12 years because I'm sick of it. I'm going to, you can say whatever you want to, people can come tell me what they want to. I'm going to school for a purpose. I'm sick of it. For, for the 43 years I've been living, I've been listening to the same garbage with these politicians. Nothing changed. I watched them come out their houses and he, 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 he. And in four years, you never hear from them again. And it's messed up worse than what it was.
was before they went in. So at the end of the day, I'm like, the job can't get done right by somebody, then I got to do it myself. I'm not looking for them anymore. It's not up to them. They didn't prove who they are. Now it's up to me. And I think that at the end of the day, as residents, that's who it's up to. It's up to us. It's not up to them. We got to stop putting this power and control in these people's hands when we know that they're not going to do right because that's just how the game go, man. So at the end of the day, I ain't never been a player. I've always been a coach, man. I'm just choosing the game that I'm that I've been in. I'm switching, and now I'm gonna see politics because it ain't right, man. So at the end of the day, we know what's going on. At the end of the day, let's just use the 42 million Americans that's out of work. Let's take them dollars a week. That's, that's a dollar a week. That's four dollars a month. We put that up. We got our own package. We can do our own building, our own make. We got the talent, but we are so used to being trapped in this this wheel. That we don't want to go astray. But then they, I feel like this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a time where we, not the government, not your president, not your mayor, not your governor, we, the people, are going to have to stand up for our rights and make sure we do what is best for our family, period. We can't put that in anybody's hand anymore because it could end up to our demise. I, I, I totally agree. That was a lot. <laughs> she broke it down. She broke it down, though. It's true. It's true. Um, I, I just, you know, I'm looking at a comment here from Victoria Baker. And it, what she's saying, it's true. It's almost like it's population control. It's almost like they didn't want to pay Social Security to the elderly are the people that had already pre-existing conditions. Um, you know, uh, uh, we were talking pre-show, um, the four of us having a chat between us. And like I was telling them, brace yourselves. And I'm telling each and every one of you guys, the listening audience, brace yourselves. Because if you thought that HIV and AIDS was bad, you thought cancer was killing people? You thought COVID is killing people? What's coming next is worse. Brace yourselves. Under no circumstances should you sell out for any money. I almost feel like, <laughs> like it's like, okay, you don't have a job. You've lost everything. Let me give you a little $1,500 plus the other $1,200 that you got, it, it, it's a no-go for me. It's a no-go. I, I, you know, and I understand um, all, a lot of us are struggling right now, right? So we're struggling, but there's no way. I'm not taking any money for anything because just like you take that money, and this is for all my Christ believers out there, even if you ever learned about Christ, because I'm always going to go back to Christ. Everything I talk about. If you sell out over $1,500, you will take that mark. Hmm. Best believe that if you sell out over $1,500, you will take the mark of the beast. But you know, that's, 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 him, that's, um, that's the American way. Capital, capitalism created that beast because people want people want financial substance. You know what I'm saying? They they want they want that um opportunity to gain a little bit more. You know um think about how many people married people for the wrong reason. Think about how many people embraced R. Kelly because he was famous and rich. Think about how many people gave Jeff Epstein um access and a free pass. And, and a blind eye because he had money. And or they just wanted to be associated, connected to somebody with money. That that um, you know what our big problem is is we got to we got to we got to do some self-evaluation and find out what have we been doing to ourselves for this piece of paper that they got us working and killing and murdering and selling our bodies for selling drugs. For. I mean, just think about it. You know, we selling we we got paper money. That's where I look at. It. I mean, we we what we talking about now? People selling out for fifteen hundred dollars, man. People been selling out on jobs for overtime, getting other people fired. 
Think about it. Um, men and women been backdooring each other for somebody that somebody else had because of money that they made. Think about that. So it's in our nature. That's why it's so easy for them to say, well, you know what? They ain't going to take this by this vaccine because these people going to think it's Republican and these people going to think it's Repu um, the Democrat. But in the bigger picture of the 1%, we need to purge some people. We need to control this population. So how about we influence them with a little bit of money? It's like with the, rat, the rats with cheese. We the rats. We've been the rats for a long time. So now we get we have to we have to take to me you got to take money out the equation and just start thinking about values. You know what I'm saying? Because if they if they can influence you, see the average person ain't gonna look at it as a bribe, but they're gonna look at it as an opportunity to get man, you better get that fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Man, and that's then, that free fifteen hundred dollars, man. You ain't get that fifteen hundred. How many people got that twelve hundred was on the internet like they work for it? Man, everybody got that $1,200. You, you, you really that proud? So that lets you know what they value. This is what I value. Look, this free stuff that everybody get. I got it too. Yeah. We got chicken, chicken sandwich syndrome. Yeah, that, I, think, yeah. I, I think the chicken sandwich was the main experiment to get them to see what all they could do to us. I thought it was a virus in the chicken sound, just believe for real at first. <laughs> I said, man, putting something in the chicken sound, there's gonna be some people falling out around here. That but was it, crazy. And then what's to say it might not have, it might have been, but I know good and well the, the science, the psychology to that chicken sandwich is always gonna work and anything else that you know saying they want to get out to us. All they gotta do is give you a little something, a little mm -hmm. benefit. Oh yeah. And then the thing and the thing about that too is that. You know, the, uh, the people have been selling out for years, not just years, not just uh, decades, but centuries. Uh, that goes back to, you know, of how they actually got slavery to work. When you had those people that were selling out, uh, you know, selling out their own people just for a, a couple of things of gold or food or clothes, or whatever they were giving them, uh, you know, saying, to, you know, to bring these people there so they could be enslaved. So, I mean, they've been doing it for a long, long time. So they pre pretty much mastered on how to get people to do what they want them to do through like, like the lady just said in the, in the comments, dangling that carrot, you know what I'm saying? Put a little something in front of them that they want, you know what I'm saying? And they'll grab it because people's morals are more focused on not what's better for the, the betterment of our people or the community, but how can I get my pockets full? How can it, you know, better me? So, you know, uh, that, that's that selfish mentality, and that's what that's what gets us every time. So, I mean, but you know, in this situation, you can't help everybody. Everybody ain't meant to be helped because some people are going to be stuck in that mind frame because they might be around people that have that mind frame that are constantly in their ear telling them, "Hey, man, you better go ahead and get that money, man. You stupid, man. You retarded, man. You better get that money. It's free." But it's not always about free, man. It's not even worth it, you know. If it's going to, you know, endanger. You know your family, your uh, your kids, your loved ones, your community, and uh, the rest of the nation. So I mean, you know, you know some people just got to go ahead. You know, what I'm saying just uh, look look at it for what it is. You know, it's just another um, part of their entrapment to get us to go ahead. You know, uh, take that test. So I mean, which really shouldn't even be connected uh, to the stimulus package, but that's how they get you. That's how they get you. Definitely. You know, it's amazing because, like what you're saying, we do sell ourselves out, sell drugs, sell booties, sell on the strip pole or whatever. And then now, you know, a pandemic coming, oh, oh, oh somebody got to take care of me. But, you know, at, at, at the end of the day, I feel like this, you know, when we look at the individuals that we're dealing with, we know how to go. And a lot of us are like this. It's either me or you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm sorry what's going to happen to the rest of them, but as for me and mine, I need to make sure I'm okay. So being politicians doesn't separate them from being human and looking out for the own, and everybody else just gets the chopping block. And it's something that we've been going through for all of our lives as long as we can last, or, or long as we can actually think about. But what we really need to focus on is both sides. Democrat and Republican. Why y'all not coming to your own pockets? How about these corporations? Why they not putting their money up to try to see what they do to try to help people? Because it's the people driving it. It's the people driving it. The people that are actually in a help. We already know who they are. 
if this is up to us, it's not only us. They're not going to do our lives over there. So, you know, at the end of the day, we have to understand that when the stimulus check came out, it was over $1 trillion, and I did a live on this. When you calculated up what they sent out, there was still a lot of money left over. So now we are having a conversation where Steve Mnuchin is trying to get back $450 million or a billion, some huge astronomical number. He's trying to give it back to the Federal Reserve as if Americans don't need it. Like, I, 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 my thing is this. I don't care about my life, and I don't even get through as you care about because y'all ain't sent me no money. I don't care who you are. The Trump in office, the mayors, the governors, it's the new them folks in the offices where they can make something happen, and they don't care about us. And Michael Jackson told us this years ago, as soon as Mike found out, he told all of us, and he put in the video, and it said, all I want to say is that they don't really care about us. And we still try to make these abusers care. They don't care because we ain't got no money. Mm. I get it. We have to open up the United States to keep operations going. I get that. But when you put print the money that says this is what I need to say. You print this money with the Federal Reserve. So why aren't we producing what we need? Because they don't care. It's a plan that they want to execute, to execute it in front of our faces and we're still trying to make it seem like two plus two equals five. That new math instead of four. And now it's still four. Even if it's 2021, two plus still equal four and they still trying to get back to don't know how to count. And it's time for us to count. Um, I wanted to remind any of the listening audience, if you guys have comments or something you'd like to add to this conversation, because I think it's a little bit frustrating for some of us who would not sell out for a miserable $1,500. And if you would do it, I'd like for y'all to call in because I'd like to know why. I, mean, I just want to know, you know, because i like to know because I think, you know, it's good to listen to other people's point of views. And uh, the number is 321-252-8084. You can feel free to call and give your opinion because we we do, we wanna hear it. Cause you know, um, I heard Rico say at the beginning, well, maybe after a while, but would you take, my question is, would you take the money? Or would you just inject them to Man, not call? They might have to come call. find me. I might take that money and run on them. Let me find a, a loophole. Like they, you know how everybody like to find loopholes and find a way to get over. How Trump found a loophole. And they said, well, you know what? He ain't cheat. He just found a loophole. Let me find a way to cheat and find a loophole. I might get their fifteen hundred and run. They ought to come find me. Make me make me take a <laughs> shot. Hey, <laughs> y'all want to bait me up? I'll show you how to play that game. I come up here and sign up to get that money. Then soon as you soon as soon as he come out with that knee, I just look at the doctor and then walk off on me. Y'all, I ain't trying to be funny, but y'all know them inmates, them inmates getting over. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were the only ones that got that money. And <laughs> don't have to pay it back. I mean, I, I don't think they thought that through this administration. But they were the only ones that really did win out of this deal. And I mean, and like I said, I love, I have many inmate friends and stuff, so, and family. So, you know, same love to everybody. I'm just saying that I know that they, if anybody's going to find a loophole, it's probably going to be them. Uh, we really need to get in contact with the ones you know in there because they're going to know how to <laughs> do it. <laughs> And, and and the one thing that I can do to even to try to make turn a, uh, a negative into a positive for the people that do decide for any particular reason to take the test to get the fifteen hundred dollars, be smart about what you do with the money. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a hundred friends that do that, you know, saying that's over a hundred thousand dollars that you guys could go in together and start a business or uh, get something done. You know, uh, be smart about it. People always say, well, we we never have an opportunity, but now. 
this could be your opportunity. So go ahead, take that money and use it wisely. You know, I don't want to see people out here buying the new Jordans or the new Playstations or whatever else is out there that, you know, might be tipped into their eyes. You know, now, oh, I need, I need to you know they already got two cars. Well, let me go ahead and get these rims on a car. No, invest your money. Or, or either if you know things aren't going to get any better anytime soon, start stocking up on your food. And think that you that you might need. What if your electricity goes out for four months? Who's going to be able to survive? What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? You know, what I'm saying if you if you don't have a way to heat your home and it's getting cold, do you have enough blankets and things to keep your family warm? Can you provide extra blankets for your neighbors or your loved ones that might need it? You know, you know because of the fact that what you might have, they might not have. You might have may have to get it to them. So just you know, just proper preparations prevents his poor performance in times of need. Always remember that. I like, you know what? I like what you said because it is true. Although I wouldn't sell out for that little bit of money. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just no, saying. I was just going to um, say that, man. I almost feel disrespected that they even would approach <laughs> a human being with 1200 or 50. I mean, just think about a $1,200 stimulus package in Fifteen hundred with a shot this time, man. That's that's man. Twenty seven hundred dollars over twelve months. They expect you to do some kind of survival. That's that's some kind of compensation for the <laughs> hardship that you're going through, man. That's so disrespectful. Man. I mean, uh, man, that wouldn't be enough for a three year old to go buy enough candy on for six or seven months. Yeah, and then, I mean, they actually think that they could bait the human population up. We're going to get a shot and, and, and taking this risk. I mean, man, it's just, I don't know, it's just crazy, man. It's some, somebody out of the loop. Somebody really is out of the loop on. But no, I'll take that back. They can't be out of the loop because they know it's a lot more people out there going to go and jump on it. I mean, they saw the chicken sandwich experiment. They know people. The first minute you get somebody to say, hey, man, you better. Uh, ask, tell me, have y'all ever heard of this when y'all was coming up? You better go up there and sign up with them for them food stamps. Ain't nobody ever hear that from somebody in the hood. If you didn't go sign up for them, you better go sign up for them food stamps. That's free. Yeah, yeah. Anything free. People want it. People are capitalist and opportunistic, man. And so it's it's so easy for them to get stuff like this over on people and, and for people to be sold for cheap or to be bought for cheap. Toya. Absolutely, man. Let me tell you something. We already know that 50% or maybe a little bit higher is in poverty. All of those people are going to need that $1,500 check. I mean, we're really not looking at the grand scheme of what they're doing and how they literally shut down and knocked out a lot of competition. How the only companies that were essential were the 11 major companies that produce and distribute food and manufacturers. We're really not looking at the global scale of what they're doing to humanity to put us into a situation to where we're going to have to get a chip and all this stuff here. And, and, and it's just happening fast. Now, that's I know a lot of people don't want to uh, face the fact, but again, you know, whatever Trump's doing, he, he, he was trying to not, he was kind of not with all that stuff because it's going to change a lot of millionaires' money as well, too. So, yeah, I'm going to get that, baby. So what we need to understand from a global scale what they're doing to the little people who are not millionaires in the situation that is going to put us into, and they're still going to capitalize off of our debt. They're still going to capitalize off our unpaid mortgages, our unpaid car notes, our unpaid medical bills. The list goes on, and there's federal provisions for them to take advantage of that on a financial basis. So, again, what we need to do in the last nick of time is we need to implement the same things they are implementing. They're not doing anything illegal. They're mm -hmm. doing something that is in the Constitution. It is, they have the right to do a lot of these things that we're doing, but we, the Americans, need to know this information and do it for ourselves with our own businesses and take advantage of it because if we don't, we're, we're acknowledging an economic collapse and there's going to be nothing left. So we don't really get a clear understanding on what's going on and be pre uh, 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 proactive, we could be a lot of trouble.
So, so what would we do? What, what, and how, how are some of the ways people would adapt if it got to a point to where, uh, let's say, for instance, they tried to make it mandatory and they tried to force people to take this shot? How, how would some of y'all react if they tried to force that vaccine? I ain't going out okay. like that. <laughs> This is what you got to think about, right? Think about in the military, they get people to go kill themselves. You feel me? Like you, you they train people to go die for us because you already know mm. if you provide food, if you meet their needs, then they're going to do whatever you want to. Now let them take this food away and let's take away their needs. People are going to automatically, again, they study this. They're going to lose it. They're going to. They gave us a good dry run. I mean, imagine the, the, the chicken plant shut down again, but this time they shut down for two years. Mm -hmm. The cattle industry. You know what I'm saying? All this industry that we need just to feed ourselves, they got us so dependent on them. I mean, um, at one point in time, you didn't have to depend on a grocery store or Walmart. I said this when I was live the other day. They got us so dependent to the point where well, you don't find anybody with a small garden in their yard anymore, much less a, a, a big garden. You don't find anybody growing their own fruit, vegetables, nobody with chickens. Now, if you see somebody with that in their yard, they're going to get laughed at or ridiculed. They really have a yard just for the beautification of it. But what about the survival? What about all this acreage you got? You went and bought it and got financed. You're paying all this money for this acreage, and you ain't growing a tomato. <laughs> you know, you got to go to the store to buy a tomato and some corn. But see, that wasn't available in the past. So now we're pretty much leaving ourselves to a point of where if that did happen, if the economy crashed and all the uh, markets and all the producers shut down, they, they produce beef and, and pork and eggs and this and that. Man, what we going to do? We got a whole three generations of people that need to go out here and learn how to farm and tend the cows and pigs and chickens and stuff. People that we got to pay veterinarians. Back in the day, people had to take care of their own cattle. So they, they pretty much knew the same thing a vet knew. Now we had a man, we'd probably be poisoning ourselves, not raising all kind of bad chickens and cows and stuff. I mean, we're in a bad situation because we don't know how to survive without the help of the government or the system. And it's really sad because, listen, all you got to do is get a flower pot and go outside. We got land. We got some of the things that we need where we don't have to starve, but it's like Rico said, they have us so dependent on them. We're not going to think to just go and, and, and throw something outside. We're eating food that we literally know is killing us. We watch it every day. You watch episodes, Dr. Oz, all this, and we still go and do it. And, and, and this takes us to a next level. Mind control. Please don't sleep on it. Go do some research. Uh, nanotechnology. Where little machines, little little bite-sized, mite-sized machines are coming to make people sick, kind of like that heart heart attack gun, you mm -hmm. know. So with all these scenarios and all of the things that we don't know of, we only look at it from our aspect, but we need to look at it from a global aspect outside ourselves. So it's mm -hmm. like, regardless of what happens, we've been here before. This is America. We've been through wars before. This is this is humanity. This is what we do. We bounce back. We humans. That's what we do. We learn to adapt in a time or whatever. Afghanistan, they, honey, that's what they do. They have wars over there, honey, or uh, something going over their head. They, oh, look at that, another one. I, I mean, it don't even phase them over there, but they adapt. I mean, we are humans. We will adapt. However, the only way, and this is why I believe that God is waking all of us up, the only way that we're going to be able to know what to do and how to stay ahead of the game is to listen to the ultimate creator because he's the only one that know the playbook. He's the only one that can say, all right, y'all, listen, go on out there and build you a garden. Go on out there and do this, that, and the third. Hey, take some of that money. Take that cash. Get you some dollar bills and go sit over there. Don't, don't you give away that chain. Leave that chain. And you might not understand why you being made or, or sit like Rico. Rico might not even peep that God wanted him to exercise because he know when the strap comes, we might have to do a lot of walking and exercising and tussling and you know what I'm saying? And it's like we don't really know what's going on. But we gotta stay tuned in to God. We gotta stay tuned. Yeah, but yeah. 
Yeah, but that's a, that's a good idea for people that hadn't already started because I know we started maybe a couple of years ago, started planting vegetables and um, we haven't got to the fruit yet. We got like, you know, a lot of vegetable plants and stuff like that, you know, and that way, you know, learning how, but the thing about it is too that they've been, they've been getting rid of all of the, the pure seeds. Now they have the seeds out there that will only produce uh, fruit for one season and then that's it. They won't come back. So, I mean, they pretty much, you know, got that stuff unlocked. So if when you buy something in the store and it has, has a seed, keep the seed. You never know when you're going to need to use it. So, And, and that, that, that's, that's a terrible game to play, to sit back and, and – I mean, we thought it would be a good thing for them to genetically modify the seeds like that. But it only benefits the rich people. Mm -hmm. It benefited us. It benefited them because they could put more fruit in the stores and not have to worry about throwing so much away. So now we got more than we could get for y'all to buy. And what y'all don't buy, then we'll throw that away. But at least we ain't got to worry about these pesty bugs. The city that I live in now, that's where they came up with that technology, the PCBs. And at one point in time, we had the largest lawsuit in history, environmental lawsuit. Now it's been surpassed, but it was for $600 million. And um, Johnny Cochran came in and he did the other 300 million. But, um, man, we have like the highest rates of cancer in the world, highest cases of heart disease in the world, highest cases of diabetes in the world. I mean, just so many different afflictions around here. And these people actually forgot about it. The only thing they remember about Monsanto is all the chicks that got cut. You hear people talk about Monsanto, they don't talk, they don't talk about, hey, man, the PCBs are going to be and our offspring's system, this, this chemical that they created, all the land that they went and they had to buy and, and dig it up so deep because it was so contaminated and all the, the three-legged babies and two-headed fish and stuff that they found, evidence of they had been contaminated. Ain't nobody talking about that. The only thing they could talk about is, man, you remember when they cut the Monsanto checks? <laughs> what about all this cancer we got? I mean, it's an epidemic around here, man. People die, and it's been going on. When I was young, before I even knew what was going on, I'm like, man, why are so many people dying of cancer around here? But it was the technology. This, 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 pretty much this entire place that I live around is toxic. You got Fort McClellan that was a chemical warfare school, so they had all that buried out there. And then, like I said, you got Monsanto down here just polluting everything. But it's now Solution, now Eastman, or something like that. They keep changing the name, but. Those seeds, man, they, that, that's where they came from, man. And it's just, it's sad because they still have natural seeds. But only certain people could get access to the natural seeds. Everybody else, if they want seeds, they got to get one season. And they say it's for your benefit. It keeps the bugs from eating them. <laughs> Ain't that something? I... I still think that people should, as much as possible, plant their garden. Uh, Toya and I said this at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I don't know if you remember us having this uh, conversation about this, Toya, on air, talking about how instead of taking that money and that $1,200 check that they gave you and spending it, like Greg was saying earlier, invest in something. Invest in something. Um, so so I, let's, just, let's just take a scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just say we do take this money, right? And let's just say we do invest in something and we crumble. We crumble. There's no light, no electricity. You're not going to be able to get nothing out of there. There's no restaurants, no restaurants, no food, no stores open, no lights working. Just imagine the scenario of what happened in Puerto Rico or what happened in New Orleans. Money is it's nothing that money gonna be able to do. You know what I'm saying? So what did Puerto Ricans do though? Well, Puerto I, I Ricans mean, the Puerto Ricans didn't do anything, but you know the store messed up Puerto Rican really bad. Puerto Rico really bad. No lies, no food. Money mm -hmm. can't fix that. No matter what you invested in, what was gonna help them in Puerto Rico when that storm came through and knocked them down? That's not mm -hmm. what we need to focus on. We need to focus on resources. Money. Well, and that's exactly. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Go ahead. Sorry, hun. 
No, the re the resources. First of all, self defense. First of all, learning how to swim because we understand flirt. Learning how to be able to deal with cold temperatures. Our families need to learn how to do those kind of things. Learning how to gather, get around your vehicle if it's trapped in water. There are specific uh, strategies that we need to be teaching our families in the event of a war for real. There are things that we need to teach them in the event of an economic collapse. And there are no lights. There are no gas. There are no televisions. We still need to eat. We need to know how to kill animals, cut animals, vegetables, start fires outside, and have backups because... If it was to last for five or ten years, what your investments do for you? If they last for five or ten years, no matter what you saved up, it's going to run out. And if you're the only individual with cash, you know where everybody's going. And that can potentially start off new wealth for generations to come because whoever has those resources, they're going to be the ones on top. They're going to be the ones calling the shots. They're going to be the ones that's going to have to formalize and get their military and things of that nature. So, you know, it's it's crazy. But even with that, you know, they're taking our seeds, making them hybrid seeds, and they're not real, stashing them underground. They're, they, they they now want to legalize marijuana and ain't got no seeds no more. But now they want to mar uh, legalize marijuana, now they ain't got no more seeds, because they want to be able to control the concept. Anything they can do to keep us sleep is what they're going to do. And until we get up and stop being the legs of the table, we're not going to have a game slide off, so it's time to stand up. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'm glad she brought up the marijuana. Um, I'm sure that our avid readers <laughs> have read that marijuana is now, you know, according to judge, um, they decided to make it to where each state decides what goes on with the law, if it's legal or not legal, such as abortions used to be before, um, and I can't think of the, the law that they put through that put a stop to it and kind of made it federal then, right? So what is y'all's take on this? What is y'all's take on marijuana and it being legalized? Do you guys think there's a agenda behind it? What, what, do you guys truly think? Because I don't think that the marijuana will be the same marijuana you found even before it came became legal in Colorado. Um, I think that once it's genetically or, or, or lab changed, it won't be from the ground. But I'm going to let you all answer that. Any of y'all can take the floor. We can go back and forth on this conversation. Okay, so y'all know I'm too real for the thrill, honey. So listen here, right? If y'all remember back in 1999, y'all might not remember, they had signs up around Georgia talking about, if you think you ain't found no weed now, just wait. And then all of a sudden, this new marijuana came out called Loud. I said, I guess so, because it's going to tell on you. You walk down the street, hey, I'm over here. You're going down to your mama house. I got some dope in here. Come find me. Of course, of course. Let me tell you something. I beat Tina too many times, and by the time she got to the end, she just hit him back because they just kept going over and over the same way with the government and our drugs. If they got, if they let marijuana be legal when it got loud, I noticed a change. Our kids are zombies. Old school would smoke a joint and still can do their homework, jumping up, dancing, and whatever. These new school kids, they zombies on this weed. Hey, what's up? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> like, I'm on the joke. Like, and so, of course, along with the immunization shots, with the vaccinations, with the food, with the chemicals, with the perms, Absolutely. So they did everything else and said, no, I ain't going to touch that marijuana now. I'm going to leave the marijuana alone. I'm going to destroy and contaminate everything else. But the marijuana, I'm not going to contaminate that. Lies to tell. And let me get a little bit more Gucci before I stop it. Snoop Dogg and quite a few other rappers knew and were aware of what was going on. And they became a part of the campaign to launch that because I don't care about them Negroes. I just want money. What I got to do. And it became a campaign. Now after snooping them, push it out. Everybody smoke weed. It's not
not only an agenda coming from a race, it's an agenda coming from the devil. It's not right. They're using it to keep us sleep. They're using it to keep us immobilized. And again, if we don't come back with some kind of power to fight back, like, yeah, you can smoke, but you still need to get up and go to school. Yeah, you can smoke, but you still need to get up and go to work. Yeah, you can smoke if you want to, but you still need to get up and be productive. And and that's the problem. I know crackheads that get up and go to work. I know all kinds of folks. I know that's right. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you, the individual, the human, the, 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 the citizen, you're going to have to have some diligence about yourself to be able to bob in and out of whatever the enemy has set up for us. You know, um, I believe it just is. I believe that situation just came about because now they realize how much money could be made off of it. Um, I know so many people that have been smoking for decades and decades and decades. You got um people like the guy from um Virgin Mobile, was his name Richard on um, Richard Branson? People like him to come out and, and and speak out on behalf of it and to say, well, you know what, man, I've been smoking for my entire life since school. You got so many people. I mean, it started with Clinton. When Clinton was like, well, hey, I smoked and then Obama said he experimented. When you really go back and look at look at why it was even uh, criminalized in the first place, then you know you you realize that they it was a it was sort of a race thing and a money thing. But now in 2020, people ain't playing about folks being locked up in prison for weed. When you got child molesters getting out, or people murdering folks and getting small sentences on manslaughter, but you got people that with possession charges or, or selling weed charges doing life. You know, it gets to a point where sooner or later, logic has to kick in. You know what I'm saying? Now, what made logic really kick in is somebody found a way to actually profit off of it. Because beforehand, it was hard to profit off of it because it was too hard, well, it was too easy to grow. But now, you ain't gonna just go. You ain't just gonna go out there and grow that stuff they got now. You got to be a real green thumb. You got to have equipment. You got to be able to grow stuff hydroponically. You better if, if you were growing organic organic fruit and vegetables in the um, early nineties when they were first coming on TV talking about these pyramids that you could buy and sit and grow your food organically, and it was making the bananas be that big. If you bought that then. You nine times out of ten experimenting with that marijuana and seeing how much pure it was hydroponically, and then you found another market. Now I met some people in Florida one time. And we got on that conversation. A guy from Washington. I we were in Savannah. We were in Savannah, Georgia, and this guy was from Washington, and he was telling me that he had got some weed in Tennessee, and that was the first time he had ever seen something that had seeds in it. He was in the military, wow. so I was like. First time you ever seen it had seeds, and I like man, I said it ain't gonna grow without seeds. He exactly. was like, yeah. He said, well, I never really thought about it like that, man. He said, you know, I've been smoking pretty much since I was in high school. Mind you, this dude was like thirty five then. So in two thousand thirteen, well, two thousand twelve, when he said this, two thousand thirteen, I'm figuring he had been smoking maybe twenty years before then. That's maybe nineteen ninety three. He telling me that he had never seen marijuana with seeds in it in his life. Wow. So now I got I got friends in Washington and Oregon. I got friends up there. I, I got people that actually grow and sell to the dispensaries. And um they've been growing certain strains and stuff up there for years that people down here didn't hear about. So what it is is that that culture out there was so close to Canada. It was so close to Amsterdam and California that the culture was totally different. Now the culture has spread and it got, oh, it, everyone else is aware of it, but then you got big money people that found out a way to profit off of it. So now, you know, why not legislate it? You got John Boehner. He was the one that was the big, Obama's biggest proponent. Man, he couldn't stand Obama. Everything Obama came up with, he went against it. Now he ain't in politics no more. He want to legalize weed. He want to be an investor. Conservative Republican now. Think about it. So it's, it's a money thing, man. Most of this stuff is all about somebody's profits. They, they'll, let, they'll let me and marry children for long if, it, if they find a way to make money off of it. Capitalism, capitalism has done a lot to this country, has done a lot to human beings.
So Greg, what do you think about that? The legalization of marijuana. Well, well I, I think it never should have been illegal in the first place because it's a natural earth that they've been using ever since the Indians was doing it back there, smoking those peace pipes. So, I mean, but the thing about it that, you know, because people of color were doing so much of it, now that they had to find a way to actually, okay, then uh, we can, we can uh, put them on. Uh, uh, illegal drug charges and put them in jail. They had to try to find a way to put them, put uh, other ways to put them in jail since they were coming up with so many other ways. And that was an easy way to do it. You know, if everybody's doing it, why not just go ahead and, you know, start stopping them and searching them and finding them, you know, saying even if they don't have it, let's plant it in there to get, you know, to get them locked up. That's why they started privat uh, privatizing a lot of these prisons because they wanted more people. They were building the prisons to uh, accommodate more people because they start putting all, all these things that you know, changing these laws. Some of these laws are just ridiculous. Anyway, you got to be, you know, a real crazy people person to come up with some of these things that they actually come up with laws and stuff for, which is crazy. Like they ain't got nothing else better to do but come up and think about all of the craziest things that they can actually create laws for and that they can lock you up for. You know, especially you know uh, the, the the crazy ones where the, where they being harassing people about jaywalking and then letting the people that kill people, you know. And uh, you know, with homicide and cars and stuff, walk you know, walk around scot free. So I mean, so it's just you know, it, it, for me, for them to you know, uh, lock people up for marijuana, you know, it wasn't unheard of because you you know what they're doing. You know, it's, it's just like you know when when you talk about you know the crack cocaine and you t you talk about just the sale of cocaine, but they you know they knew that black people were doing more crack than co than the raw cocaine. So of course. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make it a felony for them to to uh, and put, have a possession of crack. But people with with, with with the regular cocaine, oh, they just need help. They just need therapy. You know, uh, would we'll you give them a slap on the wrist? You know, we we'll give them two months. You know, and let them out. You know, good behavior, or whatever. But yet, it's still some of these people that that uh, had uh, possession of crack way back then, twenty years ago, still in jail. So, are they gonna throw out all those charges? That's another thing we could talk about. You know, with them legalizing you know marijuana. What about the people that got locked up or, or in jail for marijuana? Are they going to let them out because now it's legal? Ten fines and old, old, old fines and, and on probation and handcuffs because they can't get off of papers off, off of those same charges that other people are doing exactly. legally. The next yeah, day over. That's almost like an oxymoron now, you know. You know, you, you know. Uh, for them to be locked up for something that other people are getting getting off scot free for, you know, it's crazy. They, you know, as soon as they legalize it, they should have locked, it, uh, let everybody out that I was that was in there for marijuana charges. Period. I got a friend up in Colorado now. She done been to the dispensary twice a day. Every time she goes, she put that she going in the dispensary, and that ain't nothing she normally do, but she just want to do it to experiment. And you know, my grandmother, I remember me and my grandmother was talking one day, and she told me she was like, Rico, you know what? If it wasn't illegal, I'd do it. And I said, you know what? That, that really goes to show you how brainwashed we are. We demonize it only because the government demonized it. And when they demonize it, they use it as an a, a angle to, yeah. to hold or to handcuff us. You get what I'm saying? To, to, to criminalize people. So it was an agenda behind everything. And we, and we don't even realize it. So we actually look down on people. We look down on people for smoking weed, but really and truly, we just hate that they're taking a chance on doing something illegal. Because <laughs> like I said, you got so many other people saying they want to try it. And hey. I'm going to tell you what's really disappointing. I ain't going to say disappointing what's really shocking. The first time I went out to Washington, I went to a dispensary, and I said, you know what, man? They say it's illegal. I'm pissing the seat. So my cousin, he told me, he said, go ahead. I fired up in the car. And then I look and I see a cop right next to me. I'm like, okay. I'm trying to dig it down. He's like, man, what you doing, cuz? I'm like, man, the police right there. He said, man, you forgot. It's legal. I'm like, man, I said, you, you true, you right. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I pulled up again and did it again, man. And looked dead at him. And he didn't pay no attention to me, man. I, I man, I had like, man, pull over. Let me get out this car and just look around and make sure that I'm on earth. <laughs> so, now, so I'm sitting up there doing that and then when I fly back from Washington and get to Alabama am I still in the same country you mean to tell me I can go and buy as much as I want and smoke as much as I want in Washington and get to Alabama and I bet not even have a cent of it on me if they pull me over 
Yeah. They go tear my crazy. car to pieces. Yeah, that's crazy. But then again, you, you got to think about for all, all of those peoples, Rico, that, that said that they won't do it because it's illegal. You know what I'm saying? We got to look at the moral portion of it and and, and, and whether it's good uh, good for our health or not or you know, good for us. Because back, back in the day, hanging somebody was legal. Back in the day, you know, killing somebody was legal, you know, you know. You slavery. Know. Yeah, slavery was legal. So everything that is legal doesn't mean that it's right. Traffic so we gotta get right. That, we got to get that out of our heads, you know, saying just because it's legal means that it's right. No, that doesn't mean it, you know, it's, uh, you know, what's, I know, it was right is right and was wrong is wrong. You got to right. have a more sense of what, what the difference is. So exactly. That's the and, way I look at it. I look at it the one, same way. And one thing that I want the listening audience to think about is, um, and I learned this with my dental and medical training, um, they would actually give you cocaine to numb the area of your tooth. Um, cocaine comes from a plant. Now, I'm not saying go out and get all strung out and do what you're not supposed to do. I'm not at all applauding anything you should not be doing. Uh, anything in excess is not good for you, right? I don't care if it's marijuana. I don't care if it's food. I don't care if it's a phone. I don't care if it's social media. I don't care what it is. If you're doing it in excess, it's just not good. The same thing with marijuana. It was given to people for different reasons throughout history. I don't understand how it got demonized, I guess it's the best word to say, right, Rico? Um, demonized, yeah. because then we turn around and now it's legal. But see, I'm not so quick to fall into that stuff because... Medication, opioids are legal. And guess what? It ain't good for you. Okay. And I'm, I, I, I'm not a firm believer. And that's why I asked the question at the beginning, the way I asked it, do you guys think that this will be changed in any way? And, uh, according to what you guys have said, and I think everyone here... <laughs> knows I'm 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 not a weed smoker. I I just know from others around me. Um but there are many benefits and I do look at the benefits of it. And man, I've had people tell me I never got sick when I used to smoke. Then I got a good job and now I get sick all the time. You know <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask you though. Huh? Have you have you ever drank alcohol? Of course. You don't, if you drink alcohol, you experience something way worse than weed. Especially if you got a buzz off of it. You experience something way worse than marijuana. If you smoke cigarettes, you experience something way, way more harsh and unhealthier than, than marijuana. So it was you like you said, you have to ask yourself, where did it get demonized? Well, it got demonized when they start finding the need to want to still keep certain people locked up, but these people have been free. So, you know, we, got, we, got to, we got to come up with other reasons to try to lock people up. So you come up with all these different laws, you know, and, and, and they target certain people, you know, that um, because everybody was doing. Well, actually, some of those drugs weren't even available to black people back then. But when black people start being having access to it, let's target them. Now, 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 alcohol legal since uh, great grandpa and them used to bootleg, and then when they went sell to them, oh, now, now, alcohol legal. But uh, what's his name? Al Capone. Al Capone ran Chicago. See, this is what we don't get. How do you go after the little man selling the drugs when the big man? pushing it through here. Like, why are you not going after them? Something to think about. You know, it's always been like that. So, uh, you know, what do they do? You know saying? They want to go ahead and go after the little man, but the big man is like, they they don't really want him because of the fact that they, their name might be tied to that person in some type of way or another. So, 
Well, and you know, uh, Greg, the funny thing about that, it's kind of like the industry, right? Everybody's some, it's like a circle, right? So if you mess up with one person, it can kind of close doors for you everywhere. So I guess it's kind of that same concept, <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> and I'm thinking, um, guys, it's seven o'clock. We've been on here for an hour. I can go on for two more hours. This was a great conversation. Um, we can start with Toya. Um, any closing remarks from you? Yeah, you know, I, I just want to say that it may be hard for some people, but the answer does not lie in our government. You know, the answer, it, it lies in our God. You know what I'm saying? And Amen. what he's done is he he's taken us and he uses us to be able to operate this world in governments and different positions of authority and jobs and things of that nature. Um, and at the end of the day, when you know that man is throwing you wrong, and we all know it, at the end of the day, when we see that things are uh, not going the way our God says, we have every right to buck their system to get it back on track with the Lord's system. Because if we go with what they got going on, I mean, it's just, it's just, it just is what it is, man. So regardless of what's going on, y'all just know that God is with you. Get your answers from the Lord. He'll tell you what to do, when not to do it, when to go, when not to go, what's going to happen next. And you'll be all right no matter what goes on. Fellas. You know, I'm gonna say, um, if you can, if you have any complaints, so you see things in this in this world that's just going on that you're unhappy with, don't just complain about them. Think about what caused them. The answer is right in our faces. And if you go back and find out what's the cause or the, the the foundation of most of these problems that we have, then you can move forward accordingly on who to trust and how to, how to survive. We're talking about vaccinations and you know, stimulus packages, you know, we got a whole history that people in power have shown us what they expect. And we got to go ahead and respect that and appreciate that history and live accordingly by it. Um, Greg. Well, well, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to Miss Victoria Baker. She had some great comments throughout the she whole thing. You should have called. Victoria, you should have called. And, uh, and one thing that I uh, one thing that stuck in my my mind uh, was one of her last comments on how she said that she got off of um, uh, prescribed drugs and uh, and and stayed on with the her herbal things that uh, could help her. And one thing that we have to do for the people that have that knowledge is to continue to educate other people about helping them get off of those herbs because I Absolutely. know older people that are stuck in their ways and they believe they believe religiously what the doctor is telling them. So they're scared to get off of those drugs. We have to go ahead and teach them how to slowly wing themselves off of those medicated drugs and prescribed drugs to get on something natural that could, that's better for them and that could, you know, relieve some of the symptoms that they have. So. Um, all of you guys, including Miss Baker had, and, and and Kira, all of you guys had great, great, great comments and input. I guess we can all agree, try, like at least promise that you'll try 98% to say no <laughs> to the injection. Don't sell out over $1,500. It's not worth it. Um, we, you guys will see, and you guys will see that Anna is not lying. Toya never lied to you. When we're letting you know, you got your income tax money this year for next year. You will see when you file your taxes. You will see. I hope you guys spent your money wisely and didn't go out and go spending happy and spending crazy with it. And I also pray that you guys turned around and um, and when it comes to the marijuana, if it's legalized in your state, you try to be as responsible as possible. I am a person that if it's medically helping you or, you know, medically means seizures, cancer, 
mental health because marijuana does help with many things. I've done research on it and I, I was very adamant against marijuana until I started educating myself. So education is key. Education is powerful. I have enjoyed this panel. I love this panel. These are personal friends of mine, guys. So this panel is always special to me. God bless each and every one of you guys. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Ciao.